so I'm not even gonna lie to you guys I watched way too many Logan Paul videos today and honestly I'm on a level of hype that's way too much but we're gonna have a fun time today so just hang out in there and if you are new I'm sorry that was kind of loud but I'm also not sorry so just so in addition to watching tons of Logan Paul videos today I watched a Chris Fix video of where he shows you how to super clean your engine bay and I actually have a lot of the stuff that he used in that video so what I'm gonna do for this quick short video on for Friday is see how clean I can get it. I don't have all the product, but I have a good amount of them. So I'm gonna get as clean as possible without actually like deleting stuff. So that's what we're doing today. But first, get a truck startup. Get a truck startup. Let's do that. Ah. Wrong side. Fun fact the key only turns one way for Mark III problems. I don't know. Ah. Okay. Enough of that, for the cops crawls. All right, on to the video. All right, so if you are new to the channel, we just finished up this Mark IV intake manifold swap last week and got all dialed in. It's running fantastic. What I want to do today is get all like this kind of stuff down here cleaned up, get these hoses looking nice and new again. Like there's dirt up here, I want that gone. The underside of the hood is filthy, so that needs to be cleaned off. So we're gonna get as clean as physically possible, like all that stuff down there. I want it to look brand new. Pull the battery out, get that wiped down. Everything to look as good as possible. I don't have all the products, we'll see. Also, if you have a Mark III and you're planning on doing what I'm about to do today, I'm disconnecting my battery and taking it out so I can clean the battery underneath it and that kind of stuff. If you do not have the safety code for your radio, do not unplug your battery because it's gonna go into safe mode and then you, you're, that's it, you're kinda just screwed until you get the code. So I have the code for my card, fortunately, if you don't have the code, make sure you have that code before you disconnect your battery or you might just have no more radio advice. All right, so here's my assortment of things I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna use as many things as Chris used in his video because my engine bay is definitely not as dirty as the cars he was cleaning up. But I'm gonna use a couple of towels to wipe down stuff. This is uh, soapy water, uh, a little bit of dish soap, and then just water in the bottle. Uh, trim Restore, this does me amazing to do the hoses. I didn't know you can use that in the engine bay. I never thought of it until I saw this video, so that'll be awesome. Maybe quick tear at the end just to kind of wipe everything down. And I don't have any microfiber, so I'm using those work relatively the same but this is kind of my arsenal for things to do all right so the battery is out the top of that portion of the engine is covered up i'm going to start with the bottom of the hood here using my soapy water and some of the wipes just so nothing drops down in the electrical i should I, I don't have to do near as much as he did um most of my engine bay is pretty clean as it is there's a lot of dirt down here i want to get out i want to make sure all these hoses look nice and new again and did some stuff further back so not too bad the battery just pulled out and i am going to relocate not today but the power steering um Holder here, I'm gonna relocate that down there somewhere just so this area is cleaner and eventually gonna relocate the battery as well. Probably do the trunk. So it'll be all clean over here, all clean over here. A lot of these wires can go, the hoses can go too. I'm just not sure how yet. I'm going to help me with that. But let's get started. Just finished the underside of the hood. Hopefully you guys can see that, but it looks a million times better. It took me about 10 minutes. Like that was like the easiest thing ever. Like I don't know why I haven't done that sooner, but honestly, it makes the engine bay look that much better. And all I did was clean the bottom side of the hood. Like that was so easy. Why did I not do that anytime sooner? All right, so from there I'm gonna move down. I'm gonna get all of around here and the outside done and then work my way in, I believe. making good progress so far we got the hood up here done looking nice and shiny got my towers done and down through there was so much more dirt like down by, behind these hoses than I possibly had imagined but I got all that out of there I'm pretty proud of this actually you can see back there my AC line is looking pretty shiny it was all kicked in dirt before and up here shiny shiny so that's looking much better up here is cleaner down through there up and around not perfect but better if you see down in there there's some yellow tinting my coolant ball broke a long time ago and dropped coolant everywhere and I just can't seem to get that stuff out. So I might have to leave it like that or just end up spray painting it back there and just cover it up. So now what I'm on to, I'm going to be using my trim restore stuff here. 
this stuff here along with a brush that I saw Chris use and I'm gonna go through and do all my hoses all these pieces here everything down there make it look nice and new and this stuff will restore the color and also get into the rubber and the cracks and stuff and make it last longer so these don't crack and break on you so that's our next step all right, I got two different brushes here, a small one to get in the fine small spaces, and I got a larger one to cover the bigger hoses faster. So what I'm gonna do is use, I'm gonna pour some of this in a certain spot, dip my brush in it, and let's go along all of these hoses and make them look a lot better. So get a good look at how those look down there. All like ugly and nasty and brown faded and stuff like that. These ones are so pretty new, but they can be darker. So get a good look, and I will show you once I get through and do this first round. There we go. Dip our brush right in that and start spreading it around. All right, good. Our first one started here, and here we go. Boom! Look at that. There's our first round done. So I went through, did all the hoses left and right, did all the top pieces. Already, you can see it looks so much cleaner. And all I did was go over all my lines. So all of these. Uh, battery ones down through there everything down there I just use honestly if you're gonna do this get a brush it makes going through and hitting all these spots like so so easy to do so after you hit everything you want to hit you let it sit for probably 10 15 minutes let it really soak into the rubber or the plastic then go back through the microfiber or your paper whatever towel you have wipe off the excess and you should be good to go but it looks so much cleaner already and especially with the the help of this, the Mark IV manifold, made it so much cleaner, cleaning up all that space over there. So it's looking really good. All right, so it's sat for a little while. I'm gonna use my paper towel here, and I'm gonna go through, and we're just gonna start wiping down all the excess pieces, all these hoses we did down here, and get all the excess off, and we should be good to go. All right, so I was about to move my car back into the garage, and I get in the car, and there's no power in the... <laughs> Look where my uh, my battery's at. Oh, it's, it's, it's there. That's not gonna do me much good when it should be there. All right, so it got dark really, really fast, but it's okay. I pulled the car out of the garage, got my fancy light on, so you guys can see, as best you can see in this lighting, it looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Um, it's not going to be perfect. Like I said, this is a 20-year-old car, and until I actually pull the motor and actually like go through and send anything down and spray the whole bay, it's not going to look perfect, but it definitely looks a lot, a lot better. And I can honestly probably get that a whole lot better, but I didn't do half the steps because I didn't have half of the things. I just kind of last minute decided to went home. This is what I wanted to do today, a quick little video for you guys, but it looks a lot better. And also, this stuff, like, all these shout out to Chris Fix, because I never would have thought to use Trimmer Store on the hoses of the engine bay, but it made such a huge difference. So if you have some of this or don't have some, go pick some up and get a little brush and do it on your engine bay, because like, all the hoses in there, like, now look so new. And honestly, like, trying to buy all new hoses and install them all is, would be such a pain and so expensive. This like killed all the time. This is awesome. So shout out to Chris Fix for that. It was awesome. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Definitely check him out. All right. So since today's video is kind of short, I didn't have a lot to really film. I'm going to end the video on some questions. I haven't done it in a little while. So we're going to get back into that. First question is from Ronnie Barnes. He says, in your opinion, what's the appeal of doing a VR6 swap other than the exhaust notes and the street cred? Well, definitely say the exhaust note is one of the biggest reasons why I want a VR6. That sound is just absolutely amazing. Um, not so much street cred because I don't really build my car for anybody else but myself. So if no one else likes it, it is what it is. I love that you guys love the car, but if everyone hated the car, I would still do it the exact way I want it because it's my car. And ultimately, if I'm happy, that's what I want from the car. And also, I want the uh, power from the VR6. I know it's not going to be a race car. I mean, you can build it into a racer, obviously, but that's not my goal. I also want a bit more power of the exhaust sound. I think the VR6 looks really good in the engine bay. And when I pull that 2.0 out, I'm going to have the chance to shave the bay, do some wire tucks, respray the bay so it looks really new and nice. And then the VR6 looks really nice in there. So that's probably why I want it. All right, this next question comes from Rainus Ram. Who I said that right. Uh, have you ever tried your old mesh grill from the time it was brown to put on your Jetta now? And the answer to that question is no. When I got the car painted the steel blue the first time, I got it painted with the three bar on the car and they also painted my mesh grill uh, to match. You guys saw it in a few videos back, I compared the paint colors. Um, but since then, it's just been sitting in the corner. I haven't done anything with it. It actually still has all the tape on it from they masked it off the first time and it just hasn't moved. I don't have a desire to put it back on the car as of right now. Maybe one day it'll come back, but as of now, no. All right, next question is from Brandon Ewen. Uh, he said, I see that you have some clusters on your shelf, the gauge clusters. Uh, if they're in good condition and don't need soldering, are you willing to sell one to me on PayPal ready? Yes, if you want any of those clusters or anything you've seen in the garage, 
uh, send me a DM on Instagram and I will let you know a price or if it's available and we'll go from there. Next question is from Lando Rose. When is the VR6, oh, I can't speak words right now. When is the VR6 swap going to be done? Uh, you know, real soon, later next year, tomorrow, I don't, I, I have, honestly have no idea. The fact, the, okay, the thing with the VR6 is I bought it as a complete swap, ECU, engine, trans, everything. I literally have everything. All it needed was valve seals, what I was told. It came out of a running car, the engine ran, I got it from a buddy. Um, I got the bright idea of while the engine was out, that, you know what, might as well, it's still a good idea, it really is. Fix everything, do everything I want to do while the engine's out, so when it goes in, it can be in, and it's, be, it's in. I don't have to mess with it for a long time, it's a good, solid engine. It only has like 140,000 miles on, I think, um, but it ran really well before. All I knew was valve seals, and I have those. He gave me tons of parts, this engine, um, but I want to do bigger cams, uh, heavy-duty valve speed retainers, new lifters, I believe, um, a few more cooling bits. I have the crack pipe, the lower thermostat housing. I want to do the lower intake manifold spacer, a few more things like that, and then uh, put it all back together. So, I mean, all I really need is a few parts I need to disorder, honestly, but... Building an engine is a bit more expensive than I, I thought I've never done it before. And it's a little bit intimidating because, like, it's just so many things. Like, there's a million little things here. This sensor, that sensor, this hose. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but I have a whole list. So, when will the VR6 swap be in? Yeah, that's when. All right, this question is from Carter L. Because I'm not going to try and say your last name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I got the question a lot. Okay, which harness bar do you have? Okay, the harness bar I have is a universal harness bar. I believe you can get off from like eBay or just, just type in universal harness bar and then it'll pop up. What you have to do on Mark 3s, I mean, I'll, actually I'll just link the video in the description below if you wanna watch that. In short, you have to make custom brackets on the floor for the certain harness bar I have to make it fit. But yeah, I'll put it in the description below if you wanna watch that and see where. Okay, the last question is from Reckless Motorsports. He said, you didn't have to double up on inject, injector O-rings. They say that to double them on VW Vortex. I can't speak, guys. Okay. Take two. He said you didn't need to double up on injector O-rings. They say to double them up on VW Vortex because they tend to leak. Um, he's referring to in the Mark IV intake manifold swap, I put new injectors on my Mark III 2.0 injectors. Um, I didn't even have to swap them because mine didn't look that bad, but it's always good to put new ones on anyways. Um, I didn't have any leaking problems and I haven't since I put the new rings on and just the one. I don't see how you could double them up because there's honestly no way two would fit in the little gap for the o-ring so i don't know what that's about um but i only have one i have no problems and it works that way all right that is the end of today's video i know it's kind of short but it gave me an opportunity to answer you guys question so that's always fun uh tomorrow's video is going to be a video i don't really want to make because it's kind of irritating me and it's nothing like about you guys it's about my car that happened actually today but we will talk about that tomorrow. Hopefully it's a simple fix and hopefully it's a fix that will help you guys have the same problem. But we will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.